Legend has it that the great adventure Daedalus has hid four keys inside of the labyrinth. You and up to three other adventurers are trapped inside the labyrinth and are attempting to find the keys and make your way to escape. But only one will escape first. Beware though, there is a minotaur lurking around every corridor and if it hits you, it will stop you from being able to utilize your powers and thusly slow you down in order to acquire the keys that you need to acquire. Will you gather the keys you need, get out in time before anybody else does? Find out in the game Labyrinth by Dogmite Games. It plays one, uh, two to four players. It is a competitive game in which you're going to be utilizing actions and moving around the board and gathering keys as well as utilizing specific cards that you'll need throughout the game as well as of course your unique key actions and trying to get to that valuable end space with the keys before anybody else can do so. Will you win the game or will you be trapped in the labyrinth forever? Find out in the game where we discuss how to play, what comes in the game, and then of course my review followed by my outro. Welcome to the Labyrinth, and as you can see, I have set this game up for four players. Give every single player a player board, four desperation cards, seven tokens, uh, three of them hands and four of them feet. Go ahead and, and set a pile up for the feet and for the hands, the wall tokens, and the keys are going to also be set in a little pile as well. Go ahead and set the dice somewhere within reach for everybody, and give every single player a standee and their specific character. It's going to come with this little key here. This is basically like one of those things where if you win the game, you can take a picture of it and promote it on social media. And it's also going to come with, with baddies. This guy here is the Minotaur. You're going to set him aside for the first round of play, but in the second round of play on the first player's turn, he's going to come into play at the end of that player's turn. Uh, you're also going to go ahead and set aside the uh, seven or eight, eight different tiles that have the little circle on them. These are the starting tiles for the game. And you're going to also place the uh, exit to the labyrinth right in the middle here. I have the player uh, mat here, which is not included, but you can purchase it. And when you do so, it'll show you where to place everything, which is actually rather nice. Go ahead and choose your baddie and select their set of cards. For instance, I'm selecting the Minotaur, but there is a Cerberus and there is also Medusa. They each come with their own deck of cards, which are Desperation cards. Based on the one that you choose, you'll shuffle that into the main Desperation deck, with com which comes with a bunch of unique uh, basic or neutral cards that will go into the game. After that, you'll place all the additional tiles all around the board, uh, the, in circle around the main base nine tiles. Then you're going to go ahead and flip all these tiles over. Then you're going to go ahead and place each character on their colored space. Purple will go there, green will go here, yellow will go here, and red will go here. And that is the full setup for the game. Once you do that, uh, make sure every player has four desperation cards and a player reference sheet, and you can begin. Choose a first player, and they can then perform actions. So for instance, if I wanted to, I could choose to play as Diodotus. I have my actions here. These represent the amount of actions that I can take based on the cost. If you look at this player board here, it will show you the different actions you can take. You can move from one space to another that is uncovered. You can explore a space that um, has a tile that is facing down, and also by basically flipping it over and putting your character in that area. Uh, you can go ahead and discover a key, if that space is a key, and just face up, allowing you to get a new key and place it on your player board in any of your action slots, including that empty action slot. So you can actually cover up other actions with your new action that is a key, and you'll need all four of these to win the game. And you can only get one of each type of key. You can go ahead and take a desperation action. Basically, you can play a desperation card uh, from your hand. Let's do a bunch of different things. They tell you on the cards what they do. You can rotate a wall. Walls are these guys here. Typically, they're placed by an ability or from landing on a space that allows you to place them. And they prevent players from movement, just like these walls here associated on the tiles. You can go ahead and rotate a tile, which is basically just rotating a tile. Uh, and you can go ahead and heal. Basically, when you take damage from Cerberus mainly, you're going to go ahead and take a wound, put it on one of your actions, blocking that action from play. This action will allow you to remove those and allow you to continue using those actions. If uh, you basically run out of actions because you take too much damage, there is bonus abilities. These ones can't be covered up. There's a recover ability. You can spend five of any token to recover all of your HP loss and thusly that you keep going at a major cost to your turn, of course. And you can rearrange. You can rearrange any of your tiles here, allowing you to open up new action spaces. Each of these has a cost on them. Usually it's going to be a hand, 
or a foot, uh, or it could be multiple or uh, different types based on the keys provided. You'll use what you have in order to access those actions. At the end of your turn, you can choose to basically pass, and based on the amount of these guys you have left, you'll keep. And then you're gonna draw seven more. Um, if you run out and have none left, you'll just draw up to seven. However, if you have two, then you'll go seven plus two and you can have up to nine, which is you can basically save for later turns, which is actually kind of nice. Then you'll draw up to your desperation card limit. Your card limit is four minus the number of keys you have. So for instance, if Diodotus has two keys and they're blocking these specific areas here, at the end of his or her turn, if he has more than three or more than two cards, he doesn't draw anymore. But if he has less than two cards, he'll draw up to two because it's four minus two. And basically these desperation cards are very useful, but the uh, benefit of having uh, them is not having keys because if you have keys, you're ahead in the game. So the desperation cards are kind of like a nice little catch up mechanic. And then you're going to pass it on to the next player and they're going to go around in a full round of play. After the first round of play, uh, on the first player's turn at the end of their turn, basically when they've chosen to pass, the Minotaur will come out. When the Minotaur comes out at the end of every player's turn, they're going to roll this Minotaur die. And based on what it rolls is how many actions the Minotaur has. Typically the Minotaur will be able to move based on those actions. So if I roll a four, I can simply go one, two, three, and four. Uh, however, if I roll something like this door here or this little splatter symbol, it will allow me to move to a secret passage or will allow me to simply like, charge across the screen. Another thing to note too with the Minotaur is instead of using its movement points to move, you can actually move, uh, use its movement points to rotate the tiles that it is on or the tiles it is adjacent to, allowing it to get to certain areas. If the Minotaur hits a player, that player will typically be dispersed to a new location and that player will roll a die and take damage based on the die roll of the red die. In this case, he would take two damage. You would take the damage markers and place it on that character. And that character will then decide, or that player will decide which actions that player is going to lose up until he or she heals from that player board. And that's it. That's the basic idea of the game. You're gonna keep going until you find keys. So I'll just take one turn to show you how it works. So that's all you really need to know how to play this game. We'll start with, uh, this guy here, Diodotus, and he's got his actions. So he'll spend one foot, which will allow him to uh, move. So he'll move here. Then he'll spend one foot to explore. So I'll flip this tile over, move into the space, perform the action associated, which is a trap, meaning he takes a damage. He'll cover up maybe the rotate tile space. Then he'll go ahead and spend another foot to explore a new location. And um, as you can see, he's got this here. So he'll move here, uh, but now he can't move back because it's got a blocked area there. Uh, then he'll, oh, sorry, he couldn't, he couldn't go here because it's already blocked. He'd have to go over here. Derp. Ah, he takes another damage. Wow, that's not great. That gets, gets, gives, you, gives you an idea of how you can get your actions blocked. Uh, spend another foot, allowing him to move over here. And when you take and explore a new location, you can kind of orientate it how you want. This place here, you can hide from the Minotaur, which is nice. Other tiles might let you be a secret entrance and whatnot. And he's got three more hands. So if he wants, he can spend one of his hands to heal. Maybe spend another one of his hands to heal again. And then he's got one more. Let's say he wants to keep that. He can choose to keep that at the end of his turn. He gathers seven more tokens up. And then after that, his turn will end. He'll, if the Minotaur is out, he'll roll. Associate the roll, move it to the players, disperse them, make them take damage. Then after he's used the Minotaur's actions fully up, his turn's over, it moves on to the next player. Rinse and repeat. Um, and like I said, there is secret keys. So if he was over here and take an action, he could take that action, gather a random key of, or a specific key of that type that he chooses, he'll put it on his player board. And that's one of four he needs. After he gets all four, he'll move back to the middle of the board and he escapes, he'll win the game if he does it first. That's the game Labyrinthos. Okay, let's review it. Labyrinthos is a pretty simple action management game that has a tile placement system. You'll set up the board, place your character on the start location, and then in turn order, you'll take your actions, use the Minotaur, and then progress to the next player until somebody gathers all four keys and makes it to the exit. Pretty simple, but there's a lot that goes on in the game. Yes, it's basic action management, and you do get about seven actions per turn, but you can save your actions from turn to turn and thus utilize them later. Also, depending on the action selection that you choose, whether it be 
be feet or hands, will allow you to do certain actions throughout the game. Speaking of actions, as you gather the keys, like we discussed before, you're going to be able to change your actions in the game, and each key has its own unique action with its own unique action cost. Covering up certain actions in your game board or the free space will allow you to have a different style of actions comparatively to other players, which gets more and more progressive as the game goes on. And of course, desperation. The desperation cards are very important in this game. The more you have, the better you're going to feel, uh, better off. But the less you have, the means the more the keys you're going to have. If you have three keys, you can only have one card in hand. If you have no keys, you can have up to four cards in hand. Typically speaking, these uh, specific de desperation cards are going to be very, very handy in the game and very helpful for you in order to escape the labyrinth. Another cool thing about the desperation cards is the fact that you can use three different sets of cards in just the base game. You have Medusa and Cerberus and the Minotaur. Choose which of the three monsters you want to play as. They all have their own unique style as how they move and how they attack, but they also have their own unique deck of cards that you'll add to the Desperation deck, giving you a specific style of play uh, from those cards based on the monster you're dealing with. Uh, another really cool thing about this game is as you enter different locations, you'll be going to find spaces, and those spaces will let you do things like place walls down. You'll have these little wall tokens here, and these guys here can be placed in between the tiles, progressing uh, your play and regressing your opponent's play if you can place them correctly. It's going to slow down your opponents in certain ways, and typically speaking, they don't cost actions to place. It's either going to be by cards or by a space that you walk into. When you see spaces that are face down, you don't know what's going to happen. It could be a trap, it could be something useful, or if you see them face up, you can kind of plan your actions and your movement accordingly. Typically in the game, you're going to pretty much unlock every space in the game in order to find those four hidden keys, but not always. The game can play rather short because the keys can be all around the entrance area, which is possible, um, and, and usually speaking, they're going to be kind of spread out throughout the labyrinth. And if you're the first person to get to a key, you're going to get to choose between the four different abilities uh, that they have to offer. Uh, one might be for two hands you can build and remove up to two wall tokens or place up to two of them. Or maybe for two feet you can tiptoe. You can move into the tile that the Minotaur occupies and you don't get attacked, which is amazing. And then Puppet Master, move the Minotaur to a secret passage tile. And so those are kind of actions that only you will have throughout the game. And they'll change based on each game and based on which ones you choose. Some cards will affect what you, which ones you're able to choose or whether they're random. And uh, it, it plays really well with the game. I love action management games that start off with these same actions and then change over time based on decisions that you make. Desperation cards are also really, really cool. Some of them are really powerful, but when you use them makes a big difference. Uh, the fact that you have different sets of cards, whether you're playing as the Minotaur or you're playing as uh, Medusa and whatnot, uh, will give you the different types of cards in this deck here. That comes with a quite a lot of cards here, but you're only going to be playing with maybe about half of them, considering that each of the different types of cards will be based on the monsters, and you'll take the ones out that you don't need and put the ones in that you do need, shuffle the deck and deal them out. When you're playing the game, obviously, desperation cards are like your key use, especially at the beginning. But as you gather more keys, you have to start relying more on your abilities and which ones you have chosen. Uh, when you cover up certain abilities, it might not be very helpful. If you cover up like your movement ability, you better have something else that can allow you to move throughout the game. Um, and of course, you'll have the ability to kind of move your actions around. Uh, wounds in the game are super nasty. If you get a wound, you have to place them on your specific actions. And when you do so, you're going to have to decide, okay, I'm just not going to use that action until I heal, but if I don't heal now, I'm not going to be, it's it's going to be a detriment, or maybe it won't be, based on how many wounds you have and where you chose to place them. So even placing your wounds in this game makes a huge difference, and uh, could provide no cost um, no cost at all, or could be an incredibly uh, large hindrance as well. Uh, the quality of the game is excellent. The artwork for the game, the pieces and tiles are all nice and thick. Uh, yes, there's not miniatures in the game, which probably would have been kind of cool, but what it does have is the high quality standees are nice and thick. They'll last you a long time. Uh, even the bases for the game are the nice uh, sturdy plastic, which is great. Uh, they even if you don't want to play that, like when we played top down on our live stream, we use the little circle discs, which you have the option of either or, and the discs were nice in a top-down scenario so people could easily see it when looking down as opposed to looking to the side. So being able to provide that was just an excellent little additional aspect to the game that I enjoyed. Uh, the fact that you can choose your actions throughout the game is nice too. You won't necessarily know if you're going to use what actions you're going to use next round, but you can have an idea. And based on that, you can select those hands or select those feet, and that is going to uh, 
help you along as well. And the fact that even with the talking about production quality, they add the aspect of uh, back in, they've got the white side and then got the blue side. You can either keep those tiles and refresh them and add more, or simply you can discard them and take more, depending on how you want to play the game, provided you just follow the rules correctly. Uh, all the different tiles uh, will provide unique abilities and tricks and tips. And uh, the, the other little thing I want to mention too, not little thing, big thing, is while you do play your turn, you also get that Minotaur turn as well. And uh, you're going to be rolling the die to determine where he goes, how many spaces he moved, there's a couple abilities that you can actually function with, and you're trying to hurt your opponents, placing him on, them, him on their space. You can be nice and move him away, which also might be nice to yourself. And then, of course, the damage that you deal with the Minotaur uh, is rolled by the die. Each character also has its own unique character ability, uh, separate from not only the desperation cards and also the keys, which provides a wide variety of play, even with just the same with the character, because that ability is rather powerful. One of them will let you uh, ignore the first trap you walk on. One will not make you get pushed aside by the Minotaur. And so they kind of give you a certain style of play based on the character you're playing. And then you can kind of acquire those keys based on what character you want to use and how you want to play the game. But it still remains the same. Use your actions, get those keys, and get to the middle of the board, which makes it an easy game for pretty much anybody to play. Uh, the game may not be favorable to those who do not enjoy die rolls, because yes, when you roll the Minotaur die and of course the damage die, it will affect people differently. There is some mitigation cards, like the Desperation cards, which can prevent you from taking more damage. Some abilities will let you when you heal, move a damage to somebody else. So there is mitigation, but yeah, there is some luck involved. Uh, the tiles, of course, you don't necessarily know if the keys are going to be clumped up together. Uh, you don't know if, for instance, the keys will be all spread apart. Uh, so the games can be shorter or longer. and just a little more wide variety of chance involved in that aspect. But like I said, the mitigation is pretty good for this game, for the type of game that it is. It's got a little bit of a take that. It's not super aggressive if you don't want to be. You can be extremely aggressive if you do want to be, but there's a cost to that because you have to use actions in order to do that. But everybody gets control of the monster at one point or another. And the replayability with the different monsters is nice too. Medusa functions differently when, he sta when she stares at you or comparatively to like the, uh, the Cerberus where he always will track the person who is in line of sight regardless of where you move them. So you have to kind of choose wisely and when you place those characters there. The game mat is another thing too. I probably wouldn't enjoy this game as much as I do if I didn't actually have the game mat included. So if you bought the game and didn't buy the game mat, you should probably consider buying the game mat if you didn't like the presentation of the game. Because yes, it's going to be a 7x7 seven seven board of tiles. And uh, maybe on a just a basic tabletop, it won't look as, as, as well met. But when you have this specific little mat, so to speak, it's high quality and it brings out a ton of vivid colors and it shows you where to place everything. You'll have an idea of where to place the walls in between each of the spaces. It just does a really good job of that. There's a little bit of a munchkin S feel to it too, where if somebody gets too close to the exit with all four keys, all players will kind of mess with that person to bring them down, allowing potentially the next person or even the next person after that to win. And so it does have a little bit of that as well for people who don't like that style of play. But overall, I've played this quite a few times now. I've even played on the live stream. You can watch us play on the live stream. Link in the description below. Uh, we enjoyed this game profusely. It's quick, simple, easy to teach. A one person joined in late and still understood the rules just by seeing us play the turns without actually me explaining the entire game, which just goes to show how well it was made. Uh, it's more on the mid to lighter side. So if you're a more strategic gamer, this might not be for you, but it does have a lot of variability, a lot of options and a lot of choices to keep more wanting you to come back for more for a game that uh, in s simple in nature has a ton of additional things to add and quality and uh, <laughs> basically uh, misery for certain players. If you can do it right, you can really hit them or hinder them. Uh, you can kind of keep them out of the game for a bit, but they can never stay out for long. So you're never kind of stuck out doing exactly nothing in the game. I, I really enjoyed this game. Uh, this is one that's going to stay in my collection, specifically even because I have the mat. I think it looks beautiful. Great table presence. Something I can teach to anybody. So I am giving uh, Labyrinthos my seal of approval. There it is. It's been a while since I've given a game, uh, especially a more lighter game, my seal, but this one deserves it. And I'm going to be keeping this one for as long as I can. Thank you guys for watching the Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Labyrinthos uh, by Dogmite Games. If you like this game, link down below in the description, you can pick it up. Dogmite also does a ton of quality products. They have like D&D &D screens and they have dice towers and rollers and 
all kinds of really beautiful stuff. It looks very fancy. Hopefully at some point I get a chance to take a look at it and show you guys because I was very enamored with it when I went on the site. This is their first board game uh, that they have published and I'm, I'm very excited to see what else they come out with because this what they did with a medium to light game, uh, if they can do a heavy one, I'm going to be really ecstatic for that because the amount of replayability and variability was tremendous in this game. Uh, there'll also be a giveaway on my website for this game as well, which I'll put up in the next video when we do put it up on the site. All right, guys, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button. If you do want to see more videos like this one, we cover all sorts of games ranging from Kickstarter games to pre-published to post-published games. And if you're interested, we greatly appreciate it. You can also check out our Discord, check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, the giveaways, and uh, Kickstarter reviews, all kinds of good stuff there. And of course, you can go ahead and promote a sponsor us or patron us on patreon.com uh, we ask for like a buck it helps out on our live streams we give away games on those streams we play games just like this one on those streams so if you do support us there thank you so much for your continued support i look forward to showing you more games moonshell is coming along and it's doing quite well and i'm quite proud of what we've got going on we'll have artwork fully submitted pretty shortly here and then we're going to have our manufactured prototypes coming in which we'll show you guys on discord in our updates and maybe we'll even do a video here all right guys that's all i got for you this time and as always i look forward to escaping the labyrinth without you next time